Welcome back to the Soul Supplier Podcast with me, Alex Vass, and George, aka the Soul G. I love your intro. Today we have got two very, very special guests. Alex, tell Am us I who meant you to are. introduce myself? Yeah, of course. Uh, my name is Alexandra Hackett, aka Mini Swoosh. Um, yeah, I'm a menswear designer. I'm Australian and I run my own label, Studio LCH. And I'm Meg Parry. I am a graphic designer for an online retailer and I also co host the UK Six podcast with Alex. Of course. Um, yeah, yeah, we've got a competing, a, a competing podcast. It's in like the building. Inception. <laughs> yeah, it's like podcast on podcast. Yeah, well, we start asking you questions soon. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're the UK 7 podcast as well. <laughs> oh, are oh. you both UK 7? I thought you yeah. were 7 yeah. and a half. I'm a 7.5, yeah. yeah. But, well, he, he's technically a 7.5 yeah. as well. Okay, yeah. yeah. I've got I my foot measured. Eight, so. Yeah. I've got my foot measured. And what are you? I'm actually an eight when they measure your foot. I'm an eight, but I go into smaller shoes because they look better. Okay. Yeah. We remember eight. your type when we worked at Foot Patrol. <laughs> really? We're like, you're an eight. We're going to bring you an eight. And okay, then they were yeah. like, no, it's fine. I was no, like, no. Like, no, it looks <laughs> great. How frustrating was that? Because like, we used to get that a lot in size. People would come in and they would, they would sometimes they'd try and buy like a size up. And you'd be like, no, nah, listen, it's... What, this... because it's not available? No, no, no. They like, come in and they go... ask for a size that's clearly three sizes too big. Yeah, and they're like, I like, like it to be roomy. Do you not know your size? But there's like this much gap at the back and you're like, um, it just doesn't fit. Like, and you're trying to be nice about it. You also want to make a sale, but you're like, that just doesn't fit. I don't think I can let them walk out with that. Oh, so people are buying shoes that, cause I didn't, I thought it was the other way all the time. People buy shoes smaller, so they're a bit tighter on the foot. They look better. But you've got Both to think, ways. Though, you've got to think like, when you're a kid and your parents buy yeah, you yeah, shoes, okay. they always you say, no, you buy them a little bit. Yeah, them. and yeah. I feel like people just carry that mentality into adulthood. <laughs> no, but and I like, think just a lot of people generally don't know what size shoe they should be wearing. So many grown adults have asked yeah. me to do the test on them. Yeah. Like, <laughs> the thumb. <laughs> the can thumb. You, can, you t- can, you, can you just test my shoe? Oh, really? Like, but you're 35. <laughs> <laughs> you should know by now what size you it's are. It's like riding a bike. You know your shoe size, right? Yeah, but this yeah, is the thing that it's like Meg was saying that we used to get it. People, you're like, oh, can you just test? And I was like, bro, your toes like nowhere near the front. <laughs> you, you used to get a lot with NMDs. I'm like, uh-huh. this this can't be comfortable for you. Yeah. And then you try and explain to them, do you know if you wear your shoes like this for a long time, you're gonna get really bad back and knee problems because like your shoe doesn't fit you, so you're constantly like sliding and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're just like, no, 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 this is fine, this is fine. I was like. Huh? What? It's so your money, man. Needs, you yeah. want to throw it away. They, like. they can come and see you if they need help with finding their shoe size. Yeah, I mean, Speak I'm, I'm more Alex. than happy to help. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> but you also have to take into consideration, like, the fact that a lot of the people buying shoes don't have that many shoes. Yeah. Like, we probably have 50 plus shoes yeah, so each. Seems natural year. to us to, like, So we know how each shoe fits. Yeah. Like, yeah. And, like, we know when we put it in, we're like, that's too tight or that's. And we also won't wear that shoe that much. Yeah. But a lot of people, when they buy shoes, like, they're investing. They want that shoe to last until it wears out. I, I want to ask you about this, actually. Um, but I just want to let people know that we are running a comment competition and a competition for some mugs, which Alex is going to talk about. But drop a comment on the podcast and you are in with a chance to win a £100 voucher. Jeez. Chase, thank you for that sound effect. <laughs> Going back Getting to all Charlie stuff on us, but yeah. So you you don't wear many of your shoes that you're buying. That sounded like no, I do. You you don't wear them I much. Do. I should say. But when you could think about how many you own, realistically, you. If I did the maths and I wore each shoe equally over the course of a year, I would probably wear each shoe five times a year. If you do the numbers, that's there. five days out of the year, which is. Compared to someone who's probably... Pension. That's like 60 pairs a year. And some pairs you can't even wear unless it's dry. So then you've got to consider White the shoes, weather factor. Yeah, you can't wear... Yeah, I, I suppose... So then we're might... down to some shoes going down to like 3.2 de- what wears. Oh, yeah. yeah. Some shoes maybe like one wear a year. So what, what sort of shoe would be a one wear a year pair? Um, well, the new Air Force I got are going to be like... What, what ones? I got... Oh. I love oh, it. I love oh, it. I, know. I need to know. I need no, to. when I went out to Portland for on air, <laughs> we did like this workshop where we could design our own um, Air Force. Okay. And I did that based on a sample where it has all of the different logos on it. Oh, nice. Oh, okay. So they were like, they had a sample of them, and I was like, I just well, want those. You've got your own pair of one of one. Well, there's the sample pair. I don't know how many samples exist, but I have one of them. Oh, shit. But those are like, I don't. I'll probably wear them like once or twice in my life. So you've got a one of one Air Force that you've designed that's got loads of cool logos on it. 
Yeah, it's got loads of cool logos on it. It was I saw it as a sample, which I don't think it'll go into production. Yeah, but you can wear it for yourself, right? Yeah, I have one That's in my sick. size. So like that, I probably maybe never wear. And then I have like the Reacts, like the first colorway that came out of the black and white, which I've worn to death. Uh, yeah, I haven't worn so one. Like yet. I, I used to wear them every day because yeah, they're, so they're the most comfortable shoe. Why? I think I've got three three pairs of the React 87, and I've not worn a single pair yet. They are honestly Why? the most I'm comfortable like, shoe. They're so good. Bar the Tom Sachs, most comfortable shoe. I feel like you can I'm, wear them any day. I wear them like in I'm the rain. Wait, waiting for summertime. I'm, I've worn them on holiday with no socks. We, no we, shame. Oh. Did we both wear them when we hiked yeah, up to the Hollywood Hills? We, yeah. yeah, we did both wear them when we hiked. We hiked I remember. Down. I remember back in the day when the um, the Sea Fruit Air Force came out. Oh my. Mm. I have a saved search for them on eBay because they never go up in my size. So I had the pair like way back when I was like, you know, 15, 16, whatever. And um, whenever I would go back to Cyprus, I'd always have like a new pair of shoes and like, people look at me like, oh, what is this? Because hmm. in Cyprus, they just didn't get it, you know, anywhere near the time that we did. And I swear to you on my life, like when I was wearing these Still Air Force. Still don't know. Well, <laughs> yeah, Amazon don't even deliver to Cyprus. It's just a dodgy place, I, mate. <laughs> you got to be careful. But um, I'd go back and people would look at me like, oh my God, like, you know, I can see his toes. And people would look at me like I was Jesus or something. <laughs> in the like, Air Forces, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Which ones like, did yeah. you have? Yeah. Like, did they have a coloured back or they were, were they full transparent? No, they had a coloured back. I'm deaf. I want to say they were black. They're the ones that I'm looking for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they were. Um, that was but I have so a pair that's, that's over like 10 years ago. full transparent, so even the back is clear in like a size nine. I don't know. I just have them in the studio because I really wanted I them. I'm pretty they sure I don't the, know these. I only know the they Air, were Air Max an ID. ones that were there. What collab? The Air Max ones. They the did a uh, Comme de Gars on Jordan One as well, didn't they? A few years ago. Yeah, I, I have, have them. them. Yeah, 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 I have them. She loves a see-through Transparent thing, really. It's not really for me. I love it. You got to have six sock game or just really nice feet. And also, I think that's you've got to have the right. That's what I like about the React though. It's not like completely. It's like. It's like looking for a frosted piece of glass. It's like, you know there's a sock in there, you know there's a toe in there, but it's just a little bit frosted. Mm. You know, you can't That's not just from condensation though, is it? No, it's not. You get content condensation. Like, also, in my defence, I only wore them without socks to go down to the pool. So I feel like oh, yeah. that's fine. Yeah, I think, I think you'd be let off there. Yeah. yeah. You mentioned before about, you know, obviously having, you know, 50 plus pairs of trainers and not being able to wear them or whatever. But do you think that like, the lifespan of shoes has gotten shorter or longer? Because obviously we're buying a lot more shoes now I than we used to. I think people's perception of the lifespan of shoes has become shorter. Because like it's purchasing more and more shoes is so connected to Instagram and social media and like flexing them when you get them on the gram instantly. Mm. So a lot of people can't see past that, like the release date. I mean, I've done that. Like we convinced ourselves that we need shoes and then like I get we, rid of them a year later I'm like we why did I even buy this we literally had this conversation a couple of weeks ago it's like how many times have you kind of been really hyped for a release uh, for a release bought something put it away because you didn't want to wear it straight away then just completely forgot oh no I wear it. it straight away I really I can't resist it I, wow. I can't see, resist see we're the opposite in that I'm like, I've, like, I'm I've got to get like, it on no, now I'm going to put you on ice and then I'll like like pop you out when no one thinks that I've got you anymore like I'll just by the bring time out, you've brought them yeah. out I've worn them for like a year straight yeah, why like, would you do? Why would you hold shoes? Because I do it as well. But why do we do that? My, Just wait for a better time. Sometimes what are you my, thinking in your head. Sometimes, what? like when I was working in store, it's just like everyone in stores wearing the same shoe everyone coming through is wearing the same shoe and it's like i love the shoe but everywhere i, I look that. i see it so for me it was like oversaturated yeah stevie Ryder said that to me as well he's like i'd store a shoe for like three years and then pull it out of the box when everyone else has busted it well that was my thought process that's the, with that's the, the spoons yeah i didn't wear the weather spoons for like what up until I think the, when, on, when I wore them on the podcast, I might have been the second time I'd ever wore them. But that was just because I knew that it was going to get to a point where everyone had a pair, they were going to ruin them, and then I'd still have a pair that were in what, really good the, condition. Off, oh, the Sean Mothers yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So that was always my thought process of it. I'm, I think I'm like that a lot of the time. But then uh, the problem is, like, I'll buy something, not wear it for ages, then wear it and think, it's dead. Oh, man, I really want another pair of these oh, now. I want another pair. Of these. Uh, yeah. That's yeah. why you want to get two. Yeah, I've and done that. then then you end yeah. up spending yeah. more money because you have to either like like, like f kind of find them on eBay or you know, wherever. I've got to go into a like controversial question straight away. It's on my mind. What do you think about the quality of the Air Force Off White? Oh, I, I don't, don't own them. I don't, you own, don't them. own No, I'm okay. not sure. What do you think? I don't rate it, man. Like the qual the build of the shoe is good, but you can't wear them for long. You will wear those off-white Air Forces, the white ones, mm. for one time, and you and will get dust under the mesh. 
Oh, which is because there's layered okay. materials. Yeah. They did not think about the. Could the, you spray it? No, that no, it's underneath. It's mm. underneath. So no, spray the it before perforations you wear it. in the toe box it goes through. It goes through, so your foot can sweat, mm. and you can see it under the mesh, for instance. Oh. It's it's so bad. Like two pairs of Air Forces, I've done that. When the first off white dropped, the first ten, you guys were still working in foot patrol, weren't you? Yes, that was, we were. Oh, I, maybe I just left. You just left before, I and I left during it. Oh, it was right, like yeah. about the time that we both <laughs> got left. Fed up. <laughs> yeah, because I'm no, like, like, we've, like, we're like, we've had in our resignation. Because <laughs> the, like, the whole that. store got turned into like a, an off white collection yeah. fund, didn't it? Yeah, I remember yeah. it was really cool. Obviously, yeah. the size uh, Foot Patrol connection. Mm. We obviously um, uh, we helped out quite a bit, and yeah, yeah, we, we were, needed lots of extra staff. Yeah, it was pretty hectic. Um, especially the first few days, but I that, the best stuff. I that was how I, I didn't go. Crazy that was. <laughs> I just supplied the stuff, but yeah. it was it was pretty mad. That 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 time the hype was outrageous. I just forgot about it till you said. I was like, oh yeah, a collection point. I f- totally forgot that, that we had to necessary. That was like a necessary thing to make. End that. So one as well. Yeah. Yeah. End had like listening. a random one in in Shoreditch. Explain, somewhere. explain. Let's explain what that is for people listening and watching that don't know. So what what happens with that? Uh, so basically, the demand was like so high for the off white for the yeah, Air Force. For, yeah, yeah so for the Nike off white. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. they were bringing out the ten, which I'm sure a lot of you like listening to this. Yeah, are probably even if you don't know what the ten are, you've probably definitely seen them somewhere on an Instagram post. Mm. And then basically, the demand was so high that they had to change the whole store into just a collection point for those oh, shoes. Right. I didn't actually know it that. Was we t- didn't sell any other shoes, shoes. any other brands. Yeah. It was, the sh- oh, store no. was set up as like a gallery, yeah. so you could come and look at the I shoes. I think FP was shut for like two, three weeks for it. Yeah. What, like, it was, for that? Yeah, yeah. because yeah. yeah. so each shoe had like a two-day collection. Yes. So like, for example, uh, I know Offspring did something similar. And I remember N did it. They had F- a setup. They in had London. a pop-up. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was yeah. in, um, I think it was in Shoreditch somewhere. And it was literally like yeah, on the right, Monday yeah. you you could pick up the Air Force only, and you had a time slot that you could pick that shoe up. Then the Tuesday was like the ninety seven, and but went then on for about N 10 did days. it separately, right? But then Foot mm. Patrol would would Virgil Nike have had to paid pay for that privilege? Yeah, the- yeah, for sure. They would they would have had to there would have been some sort of fee because otherwise you would have just lost yeah, you know you've ridiculous lost amount of sales. On the flip side, though, you think of the number of units that were going to go through the door like on those days you probably wouldn't have sold that much product yeah, yeah. so th- there would have been like, you know like, Not on, like a been, Monday yeah. or something yeah yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, Saturday, you, I mean you're, yeah. you're putting 250 300, pound, 300 pairs of shoes through the till like that at like at 150 each it's a lot of money man mm. yeah you got a point it's a lot of money yeah. but um, there definitely would have like been a fee what you'd make in a month in 10 days yeah like so it's probably like worth it in that respect probably the balance is out like closing the store for two weeks yeah yeah making loads of money mm. yeah you just reminded me actually talking about foot patrol that was when i last saw you when yeah, it was the vote patrol. when it was the vote campaign wasn't yeah. it oh, that was when yeah. you're talking about right yeah yeah upstairs i didn't even clock yeah yeah so that's like a long time ago it was yeah. a long time how long ago now was two that? years isn't it two years yeah, yeah. did we wear matching tracksuits that day or did i just go in? <laughs> it was a nut- i think we did yeah we probably went in what? matching deliberately you're a good friend was it was it not the... i wore the tracksuit that alex made for me was it the, to the event it was the kind of nylon night and you had the tns to match no oh uh, it was the 97s, 97s to match, to match. yeah oh, right <laughs> love the one. was it like one was turquoise one was pink wasn't it oh that was another matching outfit yeah, yeah, yeah. we did i remember that one yeah i did remember that one how long have you two been friends um Got a few we years We met when now. we worked at Foot Patrol. Because you got no, a very we met good before. Like, the chemistry. Way you, the chemistry. Lot of, we spent yeah. a lot of time getting to know each other <laughs> in store. Like when you in work retail, it's a lot of spare time. <laughs> yeah, got yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, we got left was, on the floor yeah, a lot. Like, Interested. We were like, yeah, got left alone on the floor a lot on a Monday. Yeah. Quiet days. You have to get to know someone. Yeah. yeah when it's quiet. Because yeah, that's, yeah. how, that's how I know you as well, isn't it? On. Obviously, we worked together a long time ago. Yeah, now. long, long it's about time ago. Five, six years ago. Yeah, which and feels like yesterday. Like I remember, yeah, I remember you coming over to that store. Cause, it was the old yeah. store, wasn't it? Yeah. Ah, oh, it was good, man. The old yeah. size store back in the day. It was so intense. Was it because yeah. you were there? Uh, yeah, no, no, that, the atmosphere was intense because I was there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I made it intense for everyone. No, because you said it was good and then you said it was intense. Like, uh, yeah. it was probably both because you were there. Yeah, well, I mean, that's what other people to judge, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Meg will probably back me up and say it was yeah. just good. I tried to tell people how crazy that store was and they're like, oh, yeah, I imagine. I'm like, no, you don't understand. This was size it, carnaby. Yeah. yeah it before was so, it got refurbished. Yeah. Before it got refurbished, like, 
I was there before you. What's, what's the there? craziest thing that happened at Size that you? I can don't remember? think I'm allowed to say recording. Come on, <laughs> come on, come on. one inside for, story. I don't mate. work for the company anymore, but no, yeah. I can't. One t- inside story, <laughs> one cool story that for people. Listening. I can't think of a cool story. Can you, Alex? Oh. Maybe one we shared. I'm like, yeah, because this is come the one on. I'm thinking of. Was, Alex there was there, a, like, there was. I'm not, I know there was. Um, <laughs> we had a really good team. Funeral. There was like good atmosphere <laughs> the, there. Yeah, the, we had. A, well, honestly, the team back in the day was so good. I'm not, I mean, I'm sure the team now is still really, really yeah, good. But people worked really hard. We had like a proper bond, and they still do now. They, I'm oh, sure they in, still I do. Remember, you know, this was when the the Harachi hype was crazy. Because we had a stock room just for Harachis. Like the triple whites, the triple blacks. Yeah. Well, this was before that. Before the triple white. Alex, before, once oh, what, I like answered this? the phone and said, hi, Harachi hotline, you're through. <laughs> but they had Sorry. the size double pack, didn't they? They had the, the size. The army yes, and navy. Yes. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, there were still yeah, there some, was some good bangers, shoes, man. There's really, good really good Harachis. shoes. They rinsed the Harachis. I think though. it's coming back now, though. It is. It's, it's always been bubbling. I really want, I want that white, yellow, purple colorway. But I know what's going to go on sale. So I'm like, I'll just... This is Weighed it thing. out because I think I think that's a six summer shoe. So I think, ha- having I worked in retail, having yellow. Oh, I can't, I just, it's, can I, it's white, no, sorry, white, purple, and fluoro yellow. Just yeah, it's, got, it's new. Well, it's not new, but it's. I know. Yeah, I've got I've got one in the box. Oh. I think, but I don't remember seeing yellow on it. Sorry, Alex, man. Before just I always talking over people. Sorry, Never let anyone. <laughs> the Harachi <laughs> got us. But do you, do you find that now exciting. when you go into stores, like when you go to buy a product, that you kind of look at stuff and go, I'm not going to buy it now because I know that's going into sale? Having worked in retail and having kind of like known how it works? Yeah, I'm still yeah. a fool though because sometimes I fall so deeply in love with something that I become blind to the fact that no one else likes it. <laughs> and I'm like, we're like panicking online. Boyfriend. We're like, we've got to like, we've got to like buy it when it drops. And then like it sits there for ages. This happens to us a lot. Sale, like, we yeah. convince each other that it's going to sell out. There's going to be a queue out the like, door. This is truly we're, like, amazing. Texting each other like, you know, we've got to get there at this time. We've got to no. do this. No, no. No, no, that's from, that's, that came out last year. It's got so they, vault on it. They they came out the, the quality on those, phone. the quality on those, and there was also a yellow pair as well that had um that was no it was the screen green it was like the old school screen green. Yeah. yeah. The the quality on those was so much better than what we got when we had the Harachi craze, and they came with a pin as well. It was like I, I kind of miss when Nike do this. They they had like a little small gift of purchase. It was like I love gifts with purchase. A badge that said "Have you hugged your foot today?" Gifts with yes, purchase. Yes, I have it. Yeah, I have it was, one that was really like cool. Little badge. things that they send for. Yeah. Like I've got sticker packs and things like that yeah. that they did for Air Max Day like years ago. And just... do you remember way back when they used to put um, like comment cards in the boxes, and it was almost like asking for feedback. On the show, yeah, vaguely. Yeah, the, the, it's, it happened a long, long time there's one ago. In the, one of those on-air pairs. There's a, there's a. That's the postcard. The postcard. That's in yeah, Jasmine's yeah. one. Yeah. yeah, it's got a little message on the back or something. Oh, yeah. cute. Yeah, it's quite cool. It's a nice oh, touch. I haven't yeah. seen that. It's I a wanna... London postcard with like all the elements of the shoe on it. It's quite nice. That's nice. Gift of purchase is always nice. Though. Let's talk about um, the 720 Air Store real quick. Oh yeah. oh yeah oh yeah i mean i Raving. was talking to a digital I, I, version yeah, we did it we did it on the podcast <laughs> yeah we, did it, we actually had it live on the podcast and we oh, could really? just hear you like your yeah. voice in the background yeah, yeah. so yeah. so for anyone anyone listening watching um alex mini swoosh was on the seven when the 720 mx 720 launched she was on the air store where you could log online it was like an augmented reality you could move your phone around and like see different parts of the room. Yeah, and yeah. and what were you doing in the in the wet, in the air store? I was like a host. Yeah. So I would be like, oh, can I help you today? <laughs> you had to record everything could... for all the sound bites, right? No, but I gave them like little like snippets of things that I would okay. say. So if you keep pressing me, like I say different things. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what you, that's what you were doing on, so on the podcast. So you press me, and I'd be like, one swoosh is never enough. <laughs> and then you press me again, and be like, please stop touching me. <laughs> and be like, press it again, and be yeah, like, welcome weirdly. to the air store. <laughs> that's what I was doing, yeah. just like seeing what yeah. would happen. Yeah. And then like I just like dance around like this. <laughs> yeah. How did that even come about though? Um. Uh, I guess like we were like Nike approached me to do something for 720 and they were like we're doing this air store and like I designed like the some of the merch to be on there and they were like we would like okay. you to host yeah, yeah. what merch and what merch did you design we did a t-shirt for them I don't know if you saw it I it think- was like it's um I took different letters from different have air seen. logos yeah, yeah, yeah I don't yeah. know how many people actually noticed like what it was but it yeah and then I like made them all into vectors so you each letter said Nike Air 720, but each letter was from a different, different Nike logo. model logo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like the 720. What, what are you saying on it? Yeah, I think it's really cool. I love like the futuristic Air Max models. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I do with think you, it yeah. fits a half size small. Yeah, it's small. Yeah. Yeah, I've said that to people that it's quite tight. But I'm I'm excited to see like the newer models come out. Yeah. Like I love the like up tempo, mm. kind of vibe one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what that's that, called. Because that one of them With just the, yeah, yeah, have, yeah. It's, it's like an up tempo on With a seven twenty seven twenty cell, but it says Air Max. I think. Yeah. I yeah, love that one. One of them just one of them just released, didn't it? It was a all black one. Oh no, that was the uh, seven twenty. It's like a higher top version of the seven twenty. It was oh. it was just on Nike. I know what you're talking oh, about, but it's yeah, not with the zips. I can't tell. I you. know what you're talking about, but it's not the same. It's as, not the same. No, 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 no. I haven't seen anyone wear them, but I think they sold out on sneakers. They sold out. Yeah. There's, there was also like yeah. um, I think they're really cool. So I've seen the all white one as well, and that looked really nice. Wait, the all white 720 or the player. one that's the Air Max one? And the all white 720. Oh, the yeah. one we saw the other day. Yeah. We were together. There's yeah. an NFL player, um, uh, Odell Beckham Jr., who's yeah. like got He a came huge... into Foot Patrol. He's... Yeah, they closed did... the shop down for him. Yeah, I didn't realise... I Sorry, I'm not a big NFL fan. I probably wear the jerseys, but I'm not big. And I was like, oh, he's huge. Yeah, he's like, a big deal, man. Yeah. Like, he's yeah. really he's totally he's... big deal. And then I saw his catch. Oh, my God. So after that researched him and I saw his catch yeah. the one that kind of made his career and yeah, then I was yeah, like yeah. I get why it's a big deal you need yeah, to watch so it he's a oh, massive deal and he has his own yeah, I've seen it it's sick it's crazy I don't he, know he has his own shoot like he's he's quite like profound for having um, like custom cleats or custom yeah, boots in yeah. the NFL so yeah. I'm not yeah. about them the, the, I am not about yeah, you see a lot like Jordan 11s and stuff don't you cleats I was talking about this the other day I was like it's not a thing it looks awful some of them look pretty good you play football you're not a lifestyle person. Like, oh, don't yeah, merge the two. The crossover's like, it's very, very blurred now. It looks now, bootleg. Though. I don't know. Like, so he, he had some um, some up tempo ones that were done. Yeah, and the up tempo no. was replaced with OBJ. OBJ. Oh, no. Do you not think they look good? <laughs> no. no? Oh, I, th- I thought they were pretty cool. And they go really well with that. Like, I the, think just the sometimes, uniform. Like, like, I love the up tempo. I don't think all words work with it, though. There's a reason why air looks so good on the side of that shoe. Yeah, well, there but is they a... had OBJ on the side of it. Yeah, but on a cleat I, I as well. I think it looks good. Okay. It's, about, what, it's so... about like certain letters together. It's like the the poeticness between yeah. letters being sat next together. There's they need to have to a it. flow to them. And, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. almost want to get them now to show you what they look like. We'll find a picture, yeah, yeah. Because you, you're from a design, you're a graphic designer, right? Yeah. So you're looking at the letters in like a different way to some people maybe yeah. with why they work. If Yeah, if a letter does, I like in graffiti as well, like in pe- the way people tag things, like... Mm. If their letters don't really, like, I don't know how to describe it, but if they don't really fit together in a nice way. Like, aesthetically. Yeah, makes me feel a bit uneasy. Yeah, I get that. Like, my biggest thing when we're looking at the website, designs, app, whatever it is, we're just trying to rebuild it now. Mm. We're not trying, we are, right? But the, font, <laughs> the font is so important. It's, yeah. the, it's like the only thing that I really care too much about. The padding of the font, the spacing, the kerning, the tracking, you know, all yeah. of the elements. What makes needs, text important? They look cool. Yeah, man. it needs. It is important, and it's, it's something so we. Important. It's something we read every day, so it needs to like have a purpose as well. Yeah, you don't notice when a font is amazing because you just see it, and it looks. It's just easy on the eye. Yeah. You notice when something's that's off, right? Yeah, that's its effectiveness, basically. That's its effectiveness. Yeah. They look cool, like, and then the J leads into the solution our <laughs> okay. way around. Can we and have this, another look? These are the, I get where you're coming these from. These are the Air Max 95, obviously inspired ones. But yeah, the, so it's Air the J, Max 95. The J leads into the swoosh. I think that's okay. cool. Okay. And an up tempo all in one. Because the colorways that Air Max 95 colorways. Listen, that's just Nike, being selfish. Nike do some pretty <laughs> crazy stuff though. And I, I don't personally agree with all of the hybrids that I see, but you know they're pretty cool. I don't get me wrong. I, I would you wouldn't see you know people on a Sunday playing football wearing what them people, kind of boots. What do people need to look up for the if they're listening? Or just watch. type. Just okay. go to Google and type OBJ up tempo. Up tempo, yeah. OBJ up tempo. Just so you all know. Yeah, they are insane. Um, yeah. I I like what they've gone for here. I like a bit, you know, when we try and cross things over. Not for me. Not for me. But the whole thing is that the letters yeah. went into the air bubbles. Yeah, 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 yeah I see like, that. Air. <laughs> yeah. And but some is... people don't look that deeply into it, though. No. And they're only a one of one. I'm kind so. of into the la- like the lacing though, and the like socky element of it. I'm into like this. Section. He has got loads of like he's got weather spoon ones. Oh yeah, 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 I know. I know he's. I know. So many. I think yeah, it's just the fact that kicks, they look yeah. bootleg. Yeah, I, I, know, like, I don't get that. I appreciate, I like the support though. Like I like yeah. if you're trying to cross it over. I remember the, when they did Yeezy cleats as well. Yeah, that's it. I was like, going to say the that. The Yeezy yeah. 350, they were, Turtle they were Dove, awful. they did them in cleats. They were absolutely dreadful. <laughs> right. let's, let's talk about Yeezys real quick because you're both pretty Nike heavy, right? Um, I'm pretty like... Across the board. Yeah. I love des- like design. I love shoes. Yeah, I, I do can, own I a, lot, a lot, of lot of appreciation for yeah. all shoes. Yeah, yeah same. Um, 
I do own a lot of Nike. Um, and why do for, you think, why is that? Um, I don't know. I, I used to own quite a few Adidas. Adidas for me is more like my, like the campus. Yeah. Like the tech super. Terror stuff. Yeah, that sort of stuff. But then like, I prefer the like futuristic, like silver bullet when that, when I first saw that like years ago. And the collaborations more like fitted in my my sort of like lifestyle and my sort of like yeah I get that but I I, get basically that, yeah. the easy thing for me I was never into it when it was at Nike it was that was that shoe was never going to work on me and that wasn't my style I, I feel the same it's a hard I shoe was like to it's wear. yeah I feel like yeah. it was it was cool like and what it was trying to do so was do, cool do you own any then any Yeezys no <laughs> that's because my personal thing is that I think they look like um. One of those things that you drive across, like a lake across in America. You know, oh, that, the ones that like, the I've said this to a lot of people. Yeah. Oh, this isn't yeah. the like, hovercraft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. That, the big yeah. fan at the back. And once I saw that, I couldn't, I couldn't not see it. <laughs> I've like never wearing seen them. someone make that yeah. connection before. Can you see it now? Picture, there's a picture of that. Someone's done Is, that. Oh, I okay. Someone, so someone yeah. else has thought of someone this. Someone okay. thought of that. I think. Yeah. yeah. So you're not. You're not the only one in that boat okay cool oh there. yeah oh yeah what what about you alex alone. what about what i about? don't own any easies but there was when you they don't. first came out like are you the, sure are you I'm sure have you ever fairly bought a certain <laughs> fairly certain okay um when they first came out like the turtle dove like we knew people that wore them and like they looked good yeah they rocked yeah, them yeah. They were, i liked they got, the they like loose lacing that people were doing at yeah. the time like really like pulling out the lacing i really liked that about it what tightening yeah. the lacing no like no. pulling it all out so your oh, lacing's yes. really yeah. loose on yeah. it because it worked yeah. really well you don't for need that type yeah. Of yeah it looks cool yeah, yeah. yeah. i kind of like the way that people kind of took it and styled it and stuff yeah. like that che used to wear them all the time yeah who we worked with at foot patrol and he used to wear them Actually, all of the boys kind yeah, of they all them. had, and they looked really good. But then it just became so uh, like there was such a look that went with it. I remember like you'd see people wearing Yeezys and then those skinny jeans with like the zip mm-hmm. on the side. Yeah, see, and yeah. Just the boys that we uniform. knew who wore them didn't wear. Yeah, of course. they looked good. Like they wore them. Well, yeah, no when, skinny when, jeans. Also, not. when you work in a store where like it's quite like tourists come in and they don't know what it is, but they're just asking for. Yeezy, like Yeezy, have you got Yeezy? And they're like, no idea how much it <laughs> costs. Like, yeah. and that's I've, all they no, say to you. I've Yeezy, got, I've you're got just some, some and you, stories about you that, can't so. you can't explain to them like, oh well, this like drops on a certain day. You're just like, no, I'm sorry. Do you want to pay seven hundred pounds for? And they're like, why would I pay that? And you're like, I, <laughs> I, I don't, can't explain yeah. the whole concept of resale to every single <laughs> like person that comes into this store. You oh. need like you needed like a leaflet at the time just it's to give to exhausting. people. You know, like when you go to the doctors and they're like, here's some helpful leaflets for you. <laughs> yeah. That's, That's what idea. we needed I in think store. We said that. Yeah, I, I, thought... I also needed like a leaflet to send people to Supreme because I was like, oh, it's not oh, that the far. Direction. Yeah, it's down the road. Can someone just make one for me? The market. <laughs> at the end of the market, take a left, but you're probably gonna have to queue. Yeah, so you need to turn right, right up the alley, and you'll find the end of the queue. And then they just say, easy. <laughs> yeah, and then you're like, oh, back to this conversation. <laughs> so that also killed it off for me a little bit. So yeah. I was like, oh. What I love about- the whole model that they went for. Like he like aimed to have it in every store and be available to everyone, and like it is. Yeah, I and think it that's just, with- It really is just about to be this year with all of these new. Which is amazing. Yeah, yeah, I think that's cool. I think I if that's what you that wanted. You did that. Anyone can buy it now. Like but accessibility is key. The only thing with it is though, like I remember him first saying that you know um, he wanted it to be accessible to everybody, and he wanted everyone to be able to own a pair. But then how accessible is it for everybody to own a pair of trainers that cost £180? Like, yeah. do you not think that... If that you, is true. If, if you look at... I thought they yeah, were 130 They were, they were 150 when they first dropped. Oh, okay. Now yeah, they're 180 now they're 180 for, oh. a, for a 350 yeah. Yeah. I didn't yeah. know they'd gone up that much. Yeah. But, so, the, the, you know, for me, like, when you find anything under £100 now, that's, like, incredible, in, in yeah. my opinion. But it just keeps going up and up. Of course, and it yeah. doesn't even matter what model it is. Like, like when you look at the seven hundred, the seven hundred is two hundred and fifty pounds. That is madness. Mm, I remember madness. that. Madness. And it's like, how can that? That can't be marketed at people for everyone to make something accessible for everyone because that's just ridiculous. Like there are people out there that can't afford that kind of money. But then, I can there have been that type of money. No, like, I can't. But then there have been other like you know um, kind of athletes or entertainers who have gone into like the footwear market. And they have like kind of made shoes accessible to everyone. I know this is a bit of a random example, but uh, Shaquille O'Neal, is that one of the most famous basketball players of all time? Yeah, I know. Who he's he is. got uh, well, I don't know sometimes, but he's got um, <laughs> says that he's got a shoe you know, that's you know in Shaquille O'Neal? of course. Yeah. He's got a shoe that's in um, that's in Walmart. Yeah, and like there, there came there was a stat that came out recently that he sold like. Like an incredible amount of these shoes. Like mm. it's ridiculous the number that he said. I think it might have outsold Yeezy, in fact. 
I do do not think that sounds right. Well, I'm gonna check it. I'm gonna check I it. it like, there could be I like a statistic where it's like on the first day of release. He no, I'm gonna GZ. check it. You, like, you guys carry on. I'm gonna. Well, check Well, that could be like saying you know Georgia Asda's got a new range, and it's outsold Virgil Nike. Uh, I think, that, no, I don't I think, think so. that market for celebrity is. endorsed trainers at an affordable price tag, like is is there's no one in that market. Like affordable, other, affordable. Yeah, for affordable. Thinking about like a fifty to eighty pound how much trainer the, that's how endorsed much by a Rihanna celebrity. One with the puma. puma. The creeper. They were like yeah. one. That was quite no, but that was ten. that was affordable. I saw so, like, so many girls so well. come out for that shoe that I did oh. not see in stores yes. originally. So I really rate Puma for that collaboration because that brought like a new wave of girls into store. Yeah, that it, that that broke through into like different levels of people. Yeah. In, in yeah. commercially. Yeah, that really did. Like. It was like a stepping stone for a lot of women. I liked yeah. it. I liked the I liked the green colorway, the green creep with the brown gum sole. Yeah, and you the sl- and the slides. I, mean, yeah. I wanted She's the slides. Like, no, you're, you're crazy. <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't for me, but it wasn't designed for me. No. It wasn't designed for mm. like. Well, it's not Nike, right? <laughs> no, but I have like a lot of appreciation know, for like a lot of models. Yeah. Just because I don't personally like it doesn't mean that I don't appreciate the market that it's going into, or appreciate the type of consumer that they've designed for. Like, yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of people kind of forget about that whole industry, like the general public that brands cater for like when they think of nike and they're like oh i don't like all of these shoes that they're doing but all of those shoes weren't designed for you they were designed for other people yeah if you think yeah. like the sneakerhead market is probably like the sneakerhead people it's niche mm-hmm. it's very niche percentage wise the general market is probably like 70 percent 80 percent yeah probably so this is an interesting one isn't it alex because you are you've worked with nike a few times yeah so with what you've created with nike Tell people that are listening some of the stuff you've created because there's some uh, interesting pieces, right? Um, I have to like. It's think really back. niche, isn't it? Like you, some of the stuff that you've done has just been wild. Like, you know, you're like, making like. No, no, <laughs> <but> like, <laughs> to, to some people. Wild. <laughs> to, to some no, people. No, like, like, I have to think me. back and think tell about me everything me that you I've done. You like, yeah, make yeah. t shirts out of like socks and stuff like that, right? Or like you made like a. Oh, vest yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I do like, cost- like a lot of custom stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Like, to a lot of people, that's like crazy. Yeah, mm. yeah. I mean, I make most of that stuff's just for myself. But like when I was I going to say, that's why you originally that's what you set out to do, right? Was make something that you would wear that was unique. Oh yeah, it was yeah. never kind of about the com- commercial side yeah. of anything. It was just me making pieces that I liked, pieces that I didn't couldn't find on the market or mm. online. But without Nike's permission as well. No. Initially. Initially, no. initially you yeah. didn't have permission. No. Yeah. So it was like I'm just gonna make what I want. I yeah, it was Nike just, I'm products. gonna make a look for me to wear today or I'm gonna make a look for me to wear on the weekend when I go out or something like that. Literally like that. Yeah, 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 yeah it was no cool. Way. She'd come into work and be like, oh, okay, so I've made a new outfit for tonight. No. It's, I, it's this like Nike Pro like, bodycon skirt and yeah. like da 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 and I'd be like, okay, yeah, sounds good. And then I'd see her and I'd be like, you look really good. Yeah. Like, this is, this is 10 out of 10 for me right so now. So was, yeah. it, was it Nike stuff always or was it you just making your own clothes you, you made, no I've always made my yeah. own clothes, clothes like ever yeah. since I was like 12 got you I got yeah. like my parents maybe it was younger I don't know my parents gave me a sewing machine when I was really young okay and then I was all like I started sewing with like materials around the house like whatever I could find I think the first thing I made was like out of curtains like loads of different things and that what your mum and dad didn't mind you like ripping the curtains no off, they had they? curtains that they weren't <laughs> using it wasn't like me just cutting out of the curtains it's like one day you come home only half the sofa's it's there t-shirt. but yeah no I, I made like I used to make boot like Adidas stuff I used to sew like I used to buy white ribbon and then sew three stripes on like different clothes yeah like yeah because all it is really is like when they put their stripes on it, it's official. Yeah. If you put stripes on it yourself, it's not official. For yeah. what reason? Just because it hasn't been made at the official factory. Yeah, but- I was like really interested in kind of like subverting the idea of like branding yeah, and logos. Yeah. And like, that's what I kind of focused on when I studied at uni. It's interesting, isn't it? Because people have a problem with fakes. And this is gonna sound crazy, right? But people have a problem with wearing fake items, let's say because mm. they're not official but then you're creating your own style of item which is technically your own version which isn't official 
They love wearing that. People like wearing that. But it's made it's of. Fake. It's made it's of. It's made from official. an official product. Yeah, it's yeah. made from an official product. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the quality is there. The quality yeah. is there, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. But then the quality is there on some of these fakes that we're seeing now as well, right? Well, some of these yeah. fakes are coming from the same factory that yeah. the real ones were made at. Yeah. It's, it's just it's, it's so wild, isn't it? Like, but like, there's a lot of this like people's minds work in crazy ways mm. of what they what they will and won't wear for whatever reasons. We used to get people coming into. Um, store and like asking, bringing shoes in and being yeah, like, asking can you tell me if this is can't. fake or not? Yeah. And I was like, I. Yeah. You used to be able to tell because you just like turn it over and be like, well, this doesn't have boost in the sole or like this. Yeah, like it used to be obvious. <laughs> an, ultra, an ultra boost without boost. Yeah, yeah. it'd be like it'd be like this a Yeezy, but like there'd, yeah. be no, there'd be no like boost it was in there. Yeah, it yeah. yeah. Can you it tell? Us, and we got to a point where we you just couldn't tell. Yeah, people. Like, it, it got like, really difficult. I don't. I don't even want to tell you it's fake because then like who am I to tell you? Do you know what I mean? I just work in a store. Like my opinion mm. can't reflect that. Like, I yeah. could be wrong. I've seen some bad fakes as well. Yeah, I've seen some, some <laughs> I love ones. seeing bad fakes. Though. Yeah. No, there's some, but also, there's some if, if you're happy wearing that, and that's what you're happy wearing, like I've seen people like wear fakes, and they're happy with that. Like that's how much they wanted to pay for the shoe, and they're like good with that. Like I think that's also fine. If that's like yeah, to let people because they don't even know yeah. a version of something. Yeah, else. they're oh, just. I just bought this in a yeah. market. I just like, saw this and I liked it. Like, <laughs> and I brought it. They're but not aware of the context of it. Are we we're all on the similar page in that sense. Like, I'll buy still buy t-shirts from Primark if it's the right fit and it looks like the way I want it to look. Right. I bought big baggy white t-shirts from Primark recently. I don't care. I like, won't I'm anymore because of like You're I not work. In the same boat. Yeah. No. I'm I've, not talking about just the Primark boat, but no, just that was just a, that was just a example. No, if it I was, just, yeah. I know how much it costs to make a garment, and I know. Yeah, that's what my. I know how to make a garment, and yeah. I know how many hours were involved, and then I also know the pr- the margin okay. that mm. goes into a lot of. So it's important that you wouldn't. It's just fi- like for me, paying four pound for a t-shirt. Like, think about how much the person who made that t-shirt was paid. So how much? There's so many costs that you have. To, from an ethics yeah. point yeah, of view. Just, also, I like, the agree. longevity of that product. Like, the cotton probably hasn't, like, come from somewhere where the con- cotton's organic. Like, let's think about it, like, straight from the very start. Like, not just, like, where it, when it got to the factory. Like, synthetic. Yeah, it's coming from, like, it won't be from, like, if it's organic cotton, the ground's treated so that you can grow cotton again. Okay. If it's recycled cotton, it means that it's been shredded down into, like, a pulp and they've re- reused really old cotton. Like, cotton. I didn't so, know So, like, that. when you're buying into a brand, I don't know, like, a good person that does, a brand that does this is Noah, for example. And yeah. he's kind of, like, leading in this in, mm. like, our, like, streetwear industry. Basically... You want to you wanna buy good quality because one, it's probably going to last you longer. And it's also probably the design process from start to finish has probably been considered in the way that it will, e- how the product will e- end life will be. So like if you do have a 100% cotton t-shirt, that t-shirt can then go and be recycled. Yeah. Whereas if you have a t-shirt that is of a cotton and polyester mix, it's okay. harder to recycle. So that'd be like the Primark example. You're buying something that firstly, it's probably not going to last as long yeah. as that mixture. Yeah. It's not made from organic cotton and it's not going to be as easily recycled. Yeah, but I, I do unethical. also understand and it's unethical. that not everyone can afford to do that. And I do 100%. understand that like that there is a purpose for Primark being there. But okay. if I can make the choice myself, I will I buy high street been stuff. I've part but, like, point where I bought H&M yeah, things and I, yeah. all of those things. Starting to become more educated yeah, on you're, it. And, you're going to make me think twice. Yeah, yeah. and now I yeah. want to yeah. make like I mean, that doesn't mean you should purchases. go and spend £500 on a t-shirt because it definitely... I mean, unless it's literally made from, I don't know, something that's completely reconstructed and like truly is worth that amount. Yeah. But I think just like, even just considering it when you make a purchase is like- I, I didn't I, think once about that when I bought it. I was just like, I need a big t-shirt right now for today. I'm just gonna buy it. I don't didn't consider that the ethical side of it. And this is, yeah. I'm being brutally honest right now, but I should. I, I, but yeah, I think like all our big retailers, like I, I love the high street, like I've shopped on the high street for years mm. and like we'll continue to do so probably like. Yeah, shout out the high street. Yeah, <laughs> big, sh- big shout out. <laughs> Wouldn't be if it was for the high, the high yeah, street. Yeah, precisely. Like, yeah. And it like, it has like a big like place in the UK. Shout but out I think, them again. I think we just as like them as retailers have to start thinking about how to be more um, sustainable. It's not all on us. It's yeah. also on them to try and I think change it's like the way that 80% they work. of the like decisions get made at design process. So like you can only do like your bit as like a consumer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So There's it, so many different levels as well. Like 
you have to consider literally from like the cotton being grown to shipping the cotton to the factory that it gets made you know the fabric gets made out to shipping that you know to the factory that's going to get made like the garments going to be made cutting process sewing process packaging process sending that garment to the distribution warehouse the warehouse to the store yeah. to the customer how to does the it get customer, like, packaged to the how customer? have they how'd... put all of that into four pounds yeah, yeah. yeah. If, if you buy if online that, yeah even there's if, so if it's that many price, different it levels. might be a bit cheaper like, yeah hmm. um so then how long does it take you to make something then say depends like, what it is so if you're because you had that like tech vest with nike didn't you the nike looking the one that was like a black thing that went around the body oh i don't know which one he's talking about um, the one made from a duffel bag i'm not sure it was there was from, one made from a duffel bag with yeah. a zip in the front or the one that we did for dave the one, oh, think, or do you the mean the one that was, was at the really show good, that was like, <laughs> really I'm like know, listing all the different ones? Like, I didn't know. Yeah, I didn't know. There's so many. Like, there's one that's like was at your show that was like the two, and you did like the pattern one as well. Oh yeah, because these are all one of oh, the, the, the pattern ones one on your ones. site, isn't it? It's part of your the, the collection. There's the pattern yeah. ones as well. Yeah. Some of them are one of ones. Some of them are like limited releases, so like 20 units that we make. Yeah, yeah. If we work with something that's reconstructed, it's like quite time consuming because you have to completely deconstruct the bag. Because basically, so take take all of the stitching out, unpick the entire thing. Because we kind of want to minimize waste, okay. so you could easily just cut it up and use the bits that you want. But we try to use like as much as possible. Because if you're just making something out of something else and creating about fifty percent waste, you're not really helping the environment. So we try to use everything we use, like the binding in the middle, like every single different like element of the bag we use, mm. and that can sometimes say, take maybe like half a day to completely unpick one bag. Yeah. Will that be Depending you and Meg who will do that as well? No. Well, I, yeah, <laughs> Meg I has done it. I I've done it. Past, I've done it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've worked with like we've worked together on projects we before, but on, yeah. yeah, no, so not you, so much full time. Yeah, so with Studio Alk, then are you you designing menswear? So I design based on men's pattern pattern making blocks. Yeah. So technically, it's menswear, yeah. but I consider it unisex because I mean I wear a lot of it. Yeah, we were we were talking to we talk, I spoke to a few people about this. Yeah, spoke to Nike the other week about exactly this and how men's and women's size runs on shoes, how consumers get confused with just it, it it's, being. A, I've gotten yeah. confused before. This, like, yeah, the UK six is a problem in the yeah like, in really, the size run from women's be, to men's. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, it should just be one page online, for instance, all sizes. That's a shoe. Mm-hmm. You, it, it tends to work like that with European sizes, doesn't it? European you, is, I've realized, the best way to go. Yeah, so yeah same. If someone's asking for a shoe, I'm always like, okay. What's your European size? Yeah, yeah. because you can't, there's can't no way to like mess that up. Yeah. Yeah. US like, sizes can be confusing because there's men's and women's and they're the same number. GS system. as well. Yeah. Yeah. And then, then yeah, you, yeah, the ju- yeah, the junior stuff as well crosses over into Great the women's, school. doesn't yeah. it? So th- there is no real difference for anyone listening that doesn't know, but there, there can be slight differences with the width of the shoe. For women's, I've heard the yes, women's yeah. size. So a men's, a men's shoe is slightly yeah. wider, isn't it? Yeah. So, like when they make a shoe, they make a last, yeah. and that's like based off a foot, basically. Um, and they'll have a men's last, which will go off a men's foot, and oh. then they'll have a women's last, and that goes up a women's foot. And what are you gene- calling it? A lot, a lot. La- yeah, that's, like, the, that's the kind of the build of the shoe. Yeah, it? it looks like it looks like a foot. You yeah, can get it's a like picture a foot. up. Yeah. Search it, oh, it'll probably look like a, a foot. Last. Yeah. Or a last if you're yeah. the last, last, they're, they're last. I don't know. Last, last, yeah. last. Different. I'm probably brummy. Where so. are you from? Okay, yeah, I would it. say a last. Yeah, I th- whichever. But then <laughs> women's feet are naturally narrow. Oh, last. Last. <laughs> With a cup of tea or English breakfast. As yeah. Said Sorry. Before. I forget that I don't have to clarify that because I'm in yeah. England. <laughs> and an English breakfast is probably every like type of tea. I love I've, that. Yeah. You've said it to me a couple of times and I'm just used to like the weird things that you say. Sometimes <laughs> like crisps and chips and all these things, I'm just like, they go over my head now. When you said it earlier, I was like, oh yeah, that is a funny one, the English breakfast no thing. One's never, no one's ever pointed it out to me. Yeah, but they say it in London in places you go right. to as well. Right, like, you ask for an English, English breakfast. English breakfast, yeah, it's standard really. We, we were talking about something last week, actually, on the topic of food and drink. Uh, if you went into your local news agents, what would you pick up? <laughs> a crisp? A, a crisp. A crisp. <laughs> a crisp. One, a crisp. <laughs> one crisp. One crisp, one drink, one chocolate. What would okay. it be? Let us know. Hmm. Well, oh, I'm a big chocolate fan, but I'm going to go for 
Alex will know this. I had one like every day at size. A Kinder Bueno. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good one. Yeah, a Kinder Bueno. Well, not a bar. Uh, well, yeah, no, yeah, because you get yeah, yeah, you get yeah. two bits. Two, yeah, 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 you get two bits, which is like sometimes you eat the one and then you're like, yes, I've got another one. You have the other one later. Crisps. After That's it. I can't do if, that. If you've got, if yeah. you've got the... <laughs> 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 I, I can't wear it. So I'm, I'm, eating, I'm eating two at the same oh time. No, I'm, I'm eating mine. I'm yeah. probably no, buying another one later. That is discipline right yeah. there. You're patient, that's for sure. I've like recently given up chocolate for Lent. I don't know why. Don't ask me, but it's hard. talking about chocolate Madness. is even testing me. Hey, we can get um, you chocolate after. We've got Mars bars upstairs. It's no, cool. I can't break. I can't break it. <laughs> All right, so what would be your crisps? Crisps. I reckon I'd just go for a classic kettle crisp. Okay. S- sort of S and V, because, you know, okay. I like it salty. And then drink-wise, hmm, what do I want? <laughs> Like it's salty. <laughs> I want a really salty drink. Okay, right. yeah, it's fine. No, like a really salty crisp. Don't laugh. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> or anyone laughing. So, You're, I didn't think about that just way. The I'm, record big likes it salty. <laughs> yeah. All right. No, the comment <laughs> section. I don't want to read the comment section. Just move on quickly. Oh, okay, dude. drink wise, I am going. Mm, purple Rubicon. Oh, Rubicon's yeah. a really yeah. popular choice. I don't think I've choice, never yeah. even had a Rubicon. You have not lived. <laughs> you know, I, I said a Rubicon mango, didn't I? Yeah. yeah and Jasmine yeah. said Sounds Rubicon awful. as well. No, no, sorry. Jasmine said Rubicon. I said Kate. K- no. No, no, you both no, said No, she Rubicon. said a can of Kate. 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 Yeah, I said Rubicon. Oh. Yeah. Ow. Yeah, Alex, Al, mini swoosh, sorry. <laughs> I don't know what It's such that. a habit. Are you like a habit? sprite? Are you no, a sprite no, no, no. I like a pine cocoa sparkling. Oh, had to be oh. different. Oh. It's gone prestige. Had to be different. Wow. Pine cocoa what sparkling. news agency are you going yeah. to, man? Okay, they have them in everyone. Okay, but pine cocoa comes in like a, well, I don't know what brand it is, but it comes in like a, po- a like, what do you call I call them poppers. It's like a, the ca- carton? Uh, yeah, the straw, yeah, a yeah, popper. Yeah. This is what we call okay, something else. Okay, <laughs> so I wore that Ribena cotton. Um, this, this food conversation has took a turn. Anyway, I don't like that it's one. I like the sparkling version, which either comes in a plastic bottle or a, a can. But what is pine and cocoa? What does it taste Pineapple like? Pineapple and coconut. Oh, Sparkling. I, I literally can't get Sam, my head around Sam, sparkling water. Shout out Sam. Did oh, you know I love that? it. Uh, I only I got onto it's it really about good. a year, two years ago. It's the worst thing ever, sparkling water. It's the worst thing. I'm new to it, but I love it. I like it. You know what? I got bored of water. 25 years of plain water. I'm on the sparkling now. I have a soda now. stream at home. Oh, that dude. That is old school. No, Shout actually, out anyone who's back. got one of them. They're no, back. they're like they're the new ones are fancy. Yeah. I've seen it. I've heard about the new ones. Mm. You're going to have one in the office soon. Was that, sorry, what was that? That's the soda <laughs> machine. That's what she's doing. She's, yeah. you <laughs> she's putting it in for those who don't like, know. You flat water and then you just put it on and then you're like... Ee. And it carbonates and it, it for this, you. It, can we get like a version of it where you do that, similar to like the air store? <laughs> we get a version of where it's just you making the noise. Yeah. That's what you should we have been doing in the that. background at the air store, just making mm. sparkling water. <laughs> I reckon you sold it to anyone that could buy one Honestly, now. Honestly, it's the best investment. There's going to be so many people watching this that have no idea what a soda stream yeah, is Yeah, so as well. I thought it was old fashioned. I didn't really think it was around anymore, but it is and it is back and it is... Back with a vengeance. Amazing. You said that really passionately and convincing like you know something yeah because like- i do <laughs> tap water sparkling water no cost involved yeah, but sparkling i'm converted water i weird. think i'm gonna get one also nah. also Sold. you can get these mixes so it's like you can make your own post mix what post mix yeah. <laughs> oh sorry. i don't know what this is, is i this- love this food drink topic because it goes okay. down different no um, you know when you go to mcdonald's and they mix like sparkling water with oh like coke like or mix. whatever yeah and like that's the how co- they, yeah. yeah yeah so it's yeah. called post mix post mix okay. yeah yeah so oh, you can make because you make it after oh, and, no, you, and you, you pour in like post. a syrup into your sparkling <laughs> oh, water and you can so make good. like lemonade or ginger beer or okay yeah cola so okay. what what would be your crisps in your chocolate or your sweet uh chocolate is oh, Kit can Kat. I, oh i was gonna Oof. say what were you gonna say well i always buy you the lint one when we go shop oh yeah i do like that but Kit Kat. when we go shop I like that, Emma. You don't buy me nothing from the shop, to be fair. Really? Mate, you know, we're here doing a podcast together. Ain't that good enough? No, not really. You know what I mean? oh, well, they don't have what we have. <laughs> yeah. Sore, sub- sore subject, that. I'm buying Lin- Lindor for this one. Whoa. Yeah. Put yeah. in the boat out. That's yeah. a great chocolate, Lin- Lint balls. Yeah. yeah the oof. best. Yeah. That's a treat for me. You know, you know the best treat. ones, though, the Pay white the chocolate. <laughs> they are the good, but actually, you know what I bought yesterday? The mint ones? <laughs> The strawberry white chocolate one. No, they're ones. so dead. Oh, no, no so do you know good. which one? The oh lint ball, which is really they're good. They're on sale and I haven't bought them yet. Oh, and I was like, man. oh, they're a bit expensive. I had a mixed box of lint balls and I left all of them ones. <gasps> yeah, they're so bad. Okay, in Sorry. that box, you did they have the- segregating the table even more. 
<laughs> segregating the balls and the tail. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I do feel like it's us versus you now in this food and drink game. Yeah, so what's on I your list? Moved. You have moved. Have I? <laughs> Sorry, I just about to be close to George. That's all it is. He judged yeah. you for the soda stream. Yeah. <laughs> Sparkling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when he started making noises, I was like, this is the wrong podcast. You will be converted. <laughs> and then what are you picking from a crisp perspective? I don't really eat that many crisps. Or chips. Or chips, yeah. Okay. I say chips. So yeah, you're just avoiding crisps altogether? Uh, and I don't know, they're just not chips. really a big thing for, like, crisps in Australia. I don't mind sweet and salty popcorn. Okay. If I'm watching you a movie. Popcorn. That can fly, yeah. Like yeah, the, yeah, yeah I like yeah. the toffee That's popcorn. a grey area. You can have that. Yeah. yeah. Talk not to a, us. inoffensive. Talk to us about the UK6 podcast. Yeah. Obviously, you're on our podcast. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. Thank yeah. you talk for having us. No, yeah, thanks for coming in. Yeah. Talk to us about the UK6 podcast. Talk to us about, like, you know, the thought behind it. Okay. Well, basically, like, we we kind of just wanted a space for, like, women and to give, like, women a voice. What about men? No, yeah, men are, men. we <laughs> have men on the podcast. <laughs> I'm like, no, 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 we want men. men. Yeah. Mm. It's not saying that, like, female yeah. representation in the industry perhaps yeah. isn't as high as it should be. Of yeah. course. We, I we, were, yeah. we were talking about this uh, recently and, you know. How uh, many females work for you? Well, nobody Three. works for me. Uh, As in, I, I am at, completely at, one of at my soul own. Supplier. Oh, actually, there's four. That's great, but that's, that's quite rare. Yeah, there's all, the I suppose industry. it's five when you count down yeah. on certain <laughs> days. Yeah. Certain days he Shout out down. Yeah, so I wouldn't be like where, like without the guys in this industry, I wouldn't 100%. be where I like am, or I wouldn't be who I am without like them sharing knowledge and stuff like that. So it's no disregard to any men. <laughs> yeah, no, no, fine. So uh, yeah, tell us more then. So um, it's UK six representing women. Yeah. yeah. Started with a text message, as all conversations do. What was that then? Want to start a podcast? <laughs> <laughs> you up. It's kind of the trend nowadays, isn't it? I feel like we've got in it a little bit late. It's never too uh, late though, right? No, I don't know. I've listened to it's podcasts for a long time. It's definitely growing now. Yeah. But I think more so in the fact that there's more listeners. Mm. Yeah. I'm not sure. People are more hungry for listening to authentic stuff. That's it's just a more yeah. viable source of like entertainment now, isn't it? A lot of people, yeah. as opposed to kind of watching, I don't know, maybe like a video or, or a, a film or TV or show. Or Brexit. On well, it feels yeah. more informative and like, it's almost like you're part of a, another conversation that perhaps you wouldn't have had in your like your own life. Or you listen to people that talk about stuff that you're interested in that maybe your, fr- your friends aren't. Mm. I think you know yeah. it there when you said it's, it's very informal. Yeah, and I think that's I, I think that's I said the informative, most, but yeah, it's also informal. But it's, yeah, informal, yeah, yeah. But I, I think it's informal anyway, and I think that's partly to do with it because people can relate to it a lot easier. Yeah, there's not there's not a lot of spiel and like kind of industry words being used. It's just real people talking about stuff that, like you said, interest them in particular. I think yeah. social media can be quite face value, and you don't really feel like you you know the person, or perhaps you have this kind of like preconceived vision of the, who they are. Mm. But then on a podcast, it's literally you just talking. Mm. We interview like really interesting people, like get to yeah. know about them. Like it's it's helpful for us, like just about like sharing knowledge. I think yeah, yeah. that's a good point. When I've we... learned a lot doing this as well. Yeah. Like just from seven episodes. Is it seven now? Seven, seven episodes. Yeah, yeah, just from how, so how many episodes have you guys done? We five. 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 We don't do one we're, every week. We're bi monthly. Like, yeah. Yeah, but, yeah, but they're, they're one step ahead of us. So they, they've done a live podcast. Mm-hmm. We've done oh, two. I went, which you came to two. Oh, two. Well, I two. Yeah, we did two. They're streets ahead of us. <laughs> but you can two. Yeah. What's it like doing a live podcast? Fun. Noisy. Yeah. Noisy. No, oh, actually. Yeah. You don't have the great, like, great sound. But... No, everyone who came to 18 Montrose, when I've been to live things before, they were actually really respectful. Mm. So, like, shout outs to everyone in the audience because no one, like... That was good, that one as well. Yeah. I was there. I was yeah. in the audience. Yeah, I thought everyone was pretty respectful. Like, and, like I thought it was such a great really quiet. turnout. Like, there were just so many different people that you don't see at, like, kind of the norm industry Yeah, events. on that note, what do you think of industry events? Is it just me or do they not have that many anymore? I think they became. I feel like two years ago there were there was like multiple every week. week. Yeah. 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 yeah, I think they became very very uh, the same. Monotonous. Yeah. 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 What yeah. about the vibe, the people? Well, we went to one last week. Yeah, we. And had, I, the, I had a great the, time. The rare yeah. one. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. We had a great time. So loads good. of people. That, Maybe that. it's because I didn't see. I hadn't been to one in a while, but yeah. like I caught up with people that I genuinely wanted to have a conversation with. Met new people. Exactly that. I felt like it was a genuine 
curation of people there that really truly had a passion for it, it looked Day. like it from the pictures that I was seeing it looked like one it of the good out, things yeah. was that like obviously you had it was like a really small space where you had you know it was eight to ten shoes that were on display there were obviously a, a grill to a lot of people people would go in take their pictures have a bite to eat but then you literally had 150 people 200 people standing mm. outside yeah, having yeah. conversation yeah. and it yeah. was the, the thing with this industry is that there are so many events and not everybody goes to all of them so you might go a couple of months without seeing someone for example that you haven't seen at an event previously and it's just that kind of whole catch-up vibe and there was yeah, so many nice, yeah. there was that there was so many that like, old heads that you've kind of yeah yeah you know, hadn't seen in a while and just bumped into yeah a lot of people it was came a really, out of the really good for vibe. It. Yeah, yeah massively yeah. massive and, and i think do you know why that was i think because it wasn't a branded event yeah i think as well there was, there was no, no brand no, attached there to was, it at that time, because it was for Air Max Day, there was no other events Nothing. happening. So like, no. it was, usually, it was like, quieter this year, last, wasn't it? Last year, we obviously had all the workshops and everything. So people were like more spread out going to different events. But this year, like shout outs to the like rare event because it brought loads of people together. Cause yeah. people yeah. want to celebrate Air Max Day, mm. like irrelevant or not, like that it's part of like a Nike event. People want to like that. Air Max Day isn't just about Nike. It's about like people who love the shoe and want to celebrate it and connect with people yeah, that wear the a community shoe. Statement. It's a community yeah. thing more than anything. Like Nike don't really want to make a big deal of it anymore, from what I understand. Like it's not. It was created, I believe, and then I'm not sure what the deal with it is now. I don't. I mean, think we're they, just like yeah. People in the industry just run with it. Yeah, I'm like, exactly. it's we my thing. It's a public yeah, holiday. Yeah, yeah. Like it. I, I want to celebrate it. I, I want to take off work. <laughs> I, I don't think they. Set, I don't think they set out initially for it to have that much long, that much longevity. But now it's like this. This is coming up. What is it? Yeah. March twenty sixth. It's yeah. coming. Be I ready. think it's just upon us now. It's on us. It's it on it, yeah. Yeah, carry and it on. That's Do so your own clever, thing. Isn't it? Even the, if the I thing didn't is plan... as well, like no other brand has that. Mm. No other brand has a day that they can kind of like yeah. solidly yeah. say so that if they do Stan Smith Day now, it wouldn't work, would it? Like Stan, Yeezy mm. Day. Yeezy Day might work. But I feel like Air Max has such like Silence. a huge like heritage and like the history is like incredible. So it's like everyone has like one Air Max that they can connect to. So it's and like, it's ever growing. Yeah, like yeah it's, it's, all, it's not it's like they're just dead it off the, the, mm. the trend. It's like continuously going. Mm. It's so versatile. Yeah. The bubble's getting bigger. Yeah. Yeah. I, was, you know? hey, I was just about to say, will they break the record again with the air bubble? What's next? Yeah, definitely, I reckon it. Yeah, Ma I think so. Because that, that air bubble on the 720 is the biggest air bubble, right? 1080. So, yeah. 1080 air bubble. Yeah. yeah. But it's still not that big. What, the air bubble on the 720? It's big, but it's, it's not just, that it, big. It's, it's not it's, like crazy big. I get what you're saying because it the way they've said it it goes up the back of the shoe but it's not really up there it's not but it, yeah. that's the way they're breaking the record right but the, I mean who saw Vapormax coming yeah Vapormax yeah. that was just I love crazy I love the Vapormax yeah. when I got my first pair I, I looked over Vapermax. I was like I don't ever want to wear these because I just want to look at the this, sole yeah the sole was so beautiful we like Wild. stood there for a day like this oh mm. oh but we oh, were, we like, were you liked it, it. Yeah. the, yeah. the, the um, Vapormax yeah. when you saw it the sole amazing yeah yeah I, I, it's like a piece of architecture yeah. it's beautiful I yeah I like to just press down on the back of it like just leaning on the back of that bubble yeah and watching it that's really sounds crazy. I don't wear mine that often though because because I, I have like the platinum ones, so they get very dirty. So we were saying it, I feel like it kind of took a, the triple black colorway to come out for it to really kick off. Mm, like, it's very popular. Now it's very it's crazy. Popular. Like yeah. there's so many different iterations of well, it, isn't there? the platinum sold out as well, man. You gotta remember. But that. it was really limited numbers, that platinum. Yeah. And then they did the one, the one with a red swoosh as well, didn't they? It was like yeah. one of the first drops. And yeah, that came like, at the same time or just after that yeah. was like the next release so then but it wasn't until the triple black came because there was a few other colors that came out that yeah. kind of sat a little bit yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. there was a cdg I blew up yeah, with the cdg it, yeah. and then they did like the exact same model but without the cdg branding yeah and then yeah. it was like it was yeah that was a bad move in my opinion yeah i don't know how I, I also like the Vapormax Utility one. That's like a little bit of like a mid sock, mm. like a midi one. Yeah, 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 I yeah. really like that one. That's like a general release. And they did it in like a dusky pink and the black and orange. Yeah. I want that There's, one. They, it's, they, they do continue to amaze us, like Nike. There is yeah, just really a, do, yeah. another thing and another thing and another thing. And you know what? I know we get a bit of stick on this podcast um, because we talk a lot about Nike. But I think it's hard not to when... You know, they, they're doing so much mm. like I think when you yeah talking about footwear yeah, yeah. We're talking, and as well talking about like newness or not like like I'm bringing like genu genuine like something new like 
instead like we've seen a lot of old model models come out the woodwork from a lot of different brands or like reiterations of like new brands and they're like it's the legend it's this it's that but like mm. they're actually bringing like a new model we have never seen before. But the, the other thing I, I find difficult, especially for a brand like Adidas, is they do bring that stuff from their archive, but the younger people that are just getting into footwear, they can't connect to that mm. because they don't know anything of it. Whereas, yeah. like we said before, Air Max is such a big thing. Like, I, I probably don't know anyone that doesn't own at least one or has not uh, yeah. owned at least one Even pair of Air Max. Not into training. Exactly, because yeah. like, exactly. it's just yeah. a staple shoe. Like, everyone's yeah. had a Max 90 or an Air Max 1 or... And it's, you know... We used to get people coming to the store and they're just like, uh, I would like an Air Max. Yeah, I love yeah. that. Be like, Air Which Max one? one? 90, 97, 98. Yeah. Right. The, next, the next, I just want a black trainer. But all black will always sell. So I just want a black trainer. Okay, black, you've got this Air one, Max this 90. one. Cut into Foot Patrol. Yeah. yeah. Because Foot Patrol's like a pretty specialist store, right? Yeah. They, st- they still but they're going, sell yeah. just like... Yeah, yeah of like, course. I, right? I think, people go in there just off the street, just yeah. walking in. I yeah. think yeah. for some people though, they like, it's probably less intimidating than going into like a JD Sports where it's like, oh it's my so God. Okay. Yeah, so it's like quite an intimate experience so they feel like they maybe can ask more questions. It's like that. a boutique where, experience. Yeah, like yeah. in such a huge store like JD Sports, you're like maybe like overwhelmed by the choice. JD is horrible to walk into and I went into that Oxford Street one or the one so near Bond big, Street. Yeah. Oh mate, that is stressful being in there. I was hot. It's too hot in there. It's fast fashion, though, man. It's like it's yeah. intense retail. Like it's intense it's, retail. You, yeah, you, it has it, to be like that. So I remember. Does it? Yeah, of course. Yeah. I, I remember Sports Direct. The demand know, is there. You know when you go into Sports Direct and there's just like, you you can't walk directly to the till. There's a stand there. There's a stand oh, there. Sports stand Direct there. is till is so far away. But the reason they do that though, there's no reception <laughs> at the till. Like that's how deep into the store it is. But so. the reason they do that is though they put all of this like cheap product around you it for works. you to pick it up to put on the way to yeah. the um, to mm. the till and it, it, it's literally is a form of marketing because and, and psychology because I remember when I worked in supermarkets they always put bakeries in supermarkets at the back of the store because when the fresh bread is um, is baked the smell travels to the store and you naturally follow the, the smell yeah, towards the yeah, fresh yeah. bread that's, that's, that's how they, they a lot of people and a lot of different brands set up their their stores obviously JD like I said is just fast pace into yeah, that retail, Bond Street man. one for me I don't know like that didn't work for me yeah if you're looking to... for a different you're looking to come to Foot Patrol you're looking for a different experience <laughs> yeah. when when I I you want that one on one though, <laughs> yeah, I remember going into the JD Sports store and on Oxford Street and they have like that system where the shoes come up on that conveyor yeah, yeah, belt conveyor. and I was like this yeah. is incredible I was like I know the, blew uh, yeah, my yeah, yeah. mind I was like this is amazing <laughs> <laughs> I mean now I've seen it quite a lot but I just looked I was like this is it was it revolutionary. Was, what, what do you think of this whole JD buying everything saga? Mm. What do you make of it? It's standard. It happens in every industry. What so? What what happens? Well, like a huge company will buy smaller companies. It's monopolizing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But do, do you think it's it, business? It's kind of like they are monopolizing the high street a little bit, right? Because their group is huge. Yeah, mm-hmm. I remember not even re- like we got our staff cards, and I was like, oh, they own all these different companies. <laughs> Yeah, because they uh, own size, for yeah. control, they own JD, they own an area of every single part of retail. Yeah, yeah, yeah they own. They own quite a few more as well. They just bought Foot Asylum. Yeah, so I think yeah, that's crazy. But fair play, know, fair play though, like you know, from a business perspective, they they have gone into a lot of different brands in, or, and companies and implemented their system. And it works. They mm. bought Foot Patrol for eighty million, which for the amount of stores. Foot Patrol, or Foot Asylum, you mean? Foot, sorry, yeah, Foot Asylum. Oh, it's like Foot Patrol. I don't know if that's actually gone through yet, though. I think. Um, they, they, it's going to take around nine months to go through. It was a nine. Yeah, I was going to say like, to get it over really the dotted about line. Buying yeah. the company, it's about buying like those store spaces and like that yeah, market. That's right. So like where. Foot Asylum was earning X amount of profit. Now they will earn that X amount of profit and they know that no one else will earn that profit. Yeah, exactly. They will now earn all of that. So. JD's next competitor is Sports Direct and they don't need to be Sports Direct. If you look at the sales every year, it'll be like Sports Direct and then JD. Nah, but, I don't think it can't be anywhere near. No, it is. Like I researched what, it for in the UK? my... Sports yeah, so Direct basically is... Sports Direct sells more, but JD has bigger growth. Yeah. So wow. Sports Direct is staying like pretty stable and still making money, but... JD, this is like the last time I looked at the stats. JD has had bigger growth, but also the interest in the sportswear market has grown so much. Mm-hmm. So like that money has spread across to like size and like people being interested in like climbing gear and wearing yeah. that as like sportswear and things like that. So like their growth has been it's bigger and that's how they can expand and do more stores. Mm. Well, they've got to spend the money, haven't they, in JD, where sports direct, they can spend a third of the cost mm. and buy a pair of shoes. But yeah, JD is offering something different on 
like the, in the market than what Sports Direct is. Sports Foot Direct's off, uh, offering the same. Foot yeah. Locker's a competitor though, right? JD. Yeah. <coughs> well, Foot Locker's been doing a similar thing where they're buying stores. Yeah, well, they invested in Goat, <coughs> didn't they, as well? The they, I think they own that. They own Goat now. I think so. They bought Goat, did they, for did 100 million? I thought it was they bought like shares of Goat. They bought like into it. Depends how, I mean, it depends how much hold they have on the country. The or, company, or that, depending on that how many shares they the own. Farfetch and I'm not they sure. Good <coughs> I'm not sure. Uh, Farfetch was bought? No, Farfetch bought Stadium Farfetch Goods, didn't they? Farfetch bought Stadium Goods. No, but who bought... No. no yeah. Farfetch was... bought um, TK Maxx. Did didn't they? they? I don't know this. I have not heard this. Really? Mm. You heard it here first. <laughs> no, I think so. Breaking news. I Maybe. think so. There's, there's a few things going on, isn't there? <laughs> yeah. Like a few buyouts happening. Because like JD bought Finish Line. In the US, yeah. That's their Did way they? Of, yeah, yeah, they? Yeah. Um, so that's their way of like... Hitting the US, I'm, yeah. I'm assuming. See, yeah, that's how oh, yeah. they get access. Yeah, I saw that's that. huge, that is. That's crazy. <clears throat> yeah, because basically, like, JD had, like, the UK and it had started to have Europe. Yeah. But, like, well, they, 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 are, they are definitely the strongest retailer yeah. in the UK. And I, I would argue they're probably the strongest retailer in, in Europe. Well, they opened in Australia and they're, like, one of the top trainer stores in Australia. JD have stores. Straight away. JD have stores yeah. on every they single out, continent. I think they opened last Africa year. That and is they bought insane. the Rainbow Fly, Flyknit Racer like to open the store, which was old at the time. Last year, did you say? I'm pretty no. sure it was last year. Yeah, last year JD Australia opened. Yeah, JD Australia opened and they dropped that as like their <laughs> we're open and like Australia went crazy. But like we're so like in Australia you're just so separated to like the European market in terms of releases and mm. stuff. Fun it Racer is a good sh- shoe for Australia, though, in terms of like. Oh, it's a function- great summer yeah, shoe. Yeah, yeah. It's, oh, like it's, summer. Shoe it's a good shoe all round. Yeah, yeah. I looked at mine today and was like, when am I going to wear you? Yeah, when it's not it the comfiest, I don't think. Oh. Uh, How do you, do you find it comfortable? I, I feel like they're very, they're very, very based on like a women's. Foot. Oh, it's narrow, isn't yeah, it? Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, so difficult to wear. Especially around the arch of the foot. Yeah, particular part is. Skinny yeah. foot over here, I'm cool. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, before we go, I really, really want to touch on your experience with the Nike on Air campaign and mm-hmm. kind of obviously we had Jasmine on last week and she was talking to us through uh, talking us through her shoe and her experience of the last twelve months. But how much of an impact ha- did your experience with the Nike on Air campaign have on, you know, your career and, and where you are now? Is this the one last year or the vote forward one? The vote forward vote one. Forward. Oh, okay. Forward. Sorry, yeah, I, I, I mean, said on air. Okay. It was like exponential. Like it's like, was kind of like the gateway to working on so many more projects with Nike. Um, like I love them as a brand. Like I've always, it's always been my dream to work with them directly. And that kind of started off with like the projects that kind of came after that. Um, yeah, it was really great. I mean, it's like huge exposure um, to just so many different avenues and like obviously social media. But yeah, it was also like a great experience. Like, Did you ever get to actually have a one of one of your shoe that you created? Although, uh, you know. No. Please bring it, uh, bring that, it yeah. out. That, that would have been. Dream. Make it happen. Yeah, that would have yeah. been so cool. Because yeah. your, yours was like a really, it was made it's of. It's a hard shoe to make. It was a made of like not, one panel of like every single Air Max, right? All of the original Air Max um, shoes that had visible air. So anybody that hasn't seen this already, mm-hmm. um, make sure you check it out. Just go and Google like Vote Forward. And, Air Max Mini Swoosh. Yeah, Air Max Mini Swoosh will definitely come up. The because, Air unit was a 97, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a few of us in the office. It was one of our favourite ones oh, from the you. campaign. We were talking about before Dan was raving about it, wasn't he? Yeah, because you, yeah. you literally travelled, you went all over the place with, with Nike for it, didn't you? As uh, part of the kind of campaign. Didn't you do a lot of stuff in Asia? That was yeah. for Air Max Day the year after. So okay. I've done like a few different things in different parts. Like I worked on some projects in Milan, uh, Shanghai, a few things out in Portland. I'm trying to remember. And then obviously you played a role in this year's campaign as well, didn't you? Yeah, so I was one of the mentors, but like I worked in the on air workshops. So yeah, like working with them all as they like created their mock ups. And then I was one of three people to like choose the three finalists. So it was you and who would who would Skepta other two? and Nate Job, who works for high up at Nike. Okay. Um, yeah. So we picked the three finalists that would go online, um, and then that's went up for public voting. And then I mentored Jasmine when we went out to Portland. Nice. Yeah. Oh, so you've you've essentially played a part of her journey as well. Yeah, I was kind of just like a like a mentor. Yeah. You know, like 
it's her shoe through and through. So I was kind of there just to like assist with, you know, how you work with Nike. Cause obviously working with like a huge company like Nike is like, can be quite intimidating. And there's so many levels to it and, you know. What, were there any designs that you saw, you know, other than obviously the, the winning ones, but there were any that you saw throughout the campaign when you was there that kind of really blew your mind and were like, oh my God, you know, this would work really, really well. Yeah. I mean, there were loads. Was the, was the level really high this year then? This was in Portland as well. As in, right? wait, no, no, no. Because like, you, know, you were, you were, you when were we part did the of workshops? The, yeah, the workshops. Yeah. Yeah. It was you, quite a quick thing though. It was like four ha- hours. Yeah. There were so many like, like amazing ideas, but getting an idea onto a A3 piece of paper in a way that's going to catch the attention and has everything thought out. Um, Because everyone, they they had them all on the wall, didn't they? Yeah. When you walked in. So there's a lot of amazing concepts, but execution like wasn't there or you weren't really sure where they were going with it. How long did yours take to design? So the vote forward one. I can't remember how long we got given. Would you have been able to do that in four hours? Well, we more or less, it was a different set, set of rules. Yeah, yeah. So we were kind of given more like free reign with ours, but when we did on air last year, yeah. for Jasmine's year, it was more restricted to specific models and not that many modifications. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna put you on the spot here. Out of the six, which is your favorite? Um, I don't think you can really have a favorite. No, you can, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> you can, I, I tell you what, out of the, let's remove Jasmine's one. Okay. What? Who would be your your top pick? out of the shoes remove 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 the attachments to the people or any any... no because i don't i don't think it's fair to judge like each one is like incredible for that individual for that city like it's a really personal story and i think if you favoritize one of them that's not okay a really nice thing to do because i think it was the same thing with my year it was like there's a person behind that shoe mm. and like yeah and but your deserve... yours yours was weird because yours your year like it, it felt like it, you got robbed a little bit because <laughs> oh, yeah. no 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 because there was <laughs> because obviously there was there was always stories about like oh well, you know Sean Weatherspoon only won because he had such a huge following behind him and that kind of stuff and that yeah. was what people were saying that but that there were better shoes in the campaign than the one that won uh, th- there was a lot of love for your you, shoe in the you UK were in the, you got the Sean Weatherspoon I have yeah, a pair. You have, yeah. Yeah. yeah, There was a lot of love for your shoe within the, the, the UK. I know that for sure. And I, I, yeah. I definitely heard at times that people felt that Sean Weatherspoon only won because he had such a big following on kind of you like can't Instagram. take that away. There's no, no of course with not. The, with the day and age we live in, like you can't even get everyone on the same level. Like, I love that you haven't been able to give me one out of the six. No, I think I, I, no, I, I, no, I love that you stayed very like balanced. But honestly, yeah. that is yeah. truly because like I know I was part of on air and it was a very personal thing. And there's so much negative like negativity on social media and people like hating on shoes and they don't even know the person. Mm. And it's very different to like hating on a shoe that came from Nike as a big corporation. Mm. But it's different to like hate on someone's like personal work. But and that's is... the one shoe that they did. Can I just ask about some of the stuff that you produced um, as well then? And it's because some of it, I would want to know people's reaction to some of the original pieces you produced alongside Nike, because they're pretty rare pieces, right? Yeah. Pretty one-off pieces, special pieces. But I can imagine they would get some controversial feedback as well from a more com- commercial audience. Yeah, I mean, there's so much negativity. On have you have media. you found? Because we've ha- we hear this from everyone. Not right? really the on my not really on my account. Yeah. Uh, but like, if you look at like a repost of your image, and maybe there's people feel more free to communicate their feelings via social media and also on more public posts. Yeah, Everyone feels really, that they can just voice their opinions. It's yeah. not good, it's, is it? You just want to... Nonsense. It, it, I, what, what? I like it when people write comments about both of us. Like, that one's really fun. What, so when, for the podcast, for like, instance, Yeah, or? about... Not about the podcast. Like, maybe if we've been photographed together or something like that, someone will come through and be like, say that we've got good style, but we look like housewives. Like, oh, our faces look really like housewives. <laughs> and things like that. So I'm like, if you're creative with it, I, like, I'll appreciate it. But... Yeah. I'm always about constructive criticism. If I'm going to yeah. give criticism, it's it has to be constructive and you have to understand the whole picture mm. before you say something. Yeah, is mm. there a purpose to what you're saying? Yeah. Like, does it have an effect? So with, with Studio Elk, who, who, who's your main market? Who are you appealing to most? I know you said unisex. Just people. Unisex. Yeah. Just people. Right? Unisex yeah, market. Yeah, I mean, it's, <laughs> I don't really want to delegate who it's designed it's, it's, for. It's, it's who, it's who so, likes it. Yeah. So did you not, did you ever take that did you analyze that at all before or were you just like no i also think it's hard to kind of define 
clothing and brands that fit within sportswear and streetwear to yeah. any one like genre of individuals now okay because there's so much it crossover includes everyone it includes like eight-year-olds like so how would you sum into store, it up like, then, if someone was like you know what, what how would you describe the brand uh well we focus on the concept of like reconstruction and deconstruction yeah we're kind of interested in expanding the lifespan of pre-existing products um but we're also interested in kind of like evoking the idea and kind of executing ideas that would encourage others to reconstruct or like think about waste use and yeah you know, which is your background of, right yeah. originally yeah, yeah yeah are we ever going to see any shoes in your collection mm, that's it that's what i was going to ask as well have you tried it's that's a really hard industry to get into it's looking like yeah maybe there's some ideas there's some ideas <laughs> i would love to but then also i i went nikes so, so that's the dream collaboration but, still. And then like so could you is, is there no way that you could kind of you know yeah. manufacture your own oh there's definitely ways you deal with very high minimum orders though yeah you know, okay. like manufacturing what, what shoes is really difficult is, how yeah. much are we talking then for a minimum order of like Maybe. you probably you you have you'd have to get it made in like another country you'd have to go to that factory yeah you'd have to probably like sit like it's like a re- like a really long process to make a shoe and you have to be quite ex- like you would need need like experience and knowledge you could like have you never tried to make like a one of one for yourself yeah, yeah i bought a few shoes using to like, your skills that you, yeah 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 that's it's a it. whole like, taking away the whole set, factory though. kind of like yeah i tried to do i'm still kind of trying but like putting different uppers on different soles like as in like making your own upper to put on a sole I see that I think that's like, looks so difficult to do that it's very like the techniques to remove a sole from a shoe that's what like, I mean. you use like a heat gun and like you need like a lot more equipment like what the shoe surgeon's doing it always blows me away where he's yeah. like yeah that's insane it's like a very specific like set of skills like yeah. you just people go to university just to study like footwear and like Manufacturing. You need a proper machine. You need a different sewing yeah, machine. Yeah, sewing as well machine. So it's like put the shoe on. Okay. Like you can't so it kind put of that through. A, in place yeah, you can't yeah. put it through a normal machine. Also, I think a lot of people do customs that aren't that good. Like there's an art to the custom, as in if you're going to take off a swoosh and put a new swoosh on, you know, there's an art to getting the exact right like stitch length between them and like. Yeah, on, on I wouldn't want to do a half-hearted job. Though. On this swoosh note, how, how do you mini swoosh? Was that something that was owned by Nike or was that like? something that you had the name for before i mean i think people... it was it was always the term to define like a small swoosh on a shoe like i feel like when i think of the mini swoosh i always think of an air max one yeah that's yeah yeah so yeah. It, was, it was like a pre-existing term but and you've got the instagram handle as well haven't yeah you? i remember like we were talking about it in store one day yeah, yeah. we were talking it's... you wanted she alex wanted like a personal account and then we were just I think we were joking about different names you could have yeah it was just like a... and then I just checked and I was like oh it's available yeah I, I tried to get that. at George and this guy was like I messaged him have I was you... like I tried <laughs> yeah and he was like he was like hey man I get I get um, DMs all day every day messaging me for this account I was like, sort of how much sort of, how much sort of money like, what do you want he was like I've, I've been offered up was a 30k what for the for the account ju- you, at what? George that's like Maybe, Maybe he's just. No, no, no. He's, he's straight up. He's got a Fair lot of play. followers. Like, he's got. Um, well, he's just using it for his family. It's random. I, mean, I wanted to buy. I, I think I was going to come in there with like a. Let's pay you like £300 for the account <laughs> and I'll get that jewel. That'd be sick. Because Eddie's has got at Eddie's, hasn't it? Yeah. Mm. Right. So, what is the one thing from a footwear perspective you're looking forward to this year? Hmm. <laughs> Is there a specific shoe that you're really looking forward to, or what am I looking forward to? I know things I want, but this I don't think they're coming out. It's a good way to wrap up the show. I think I it's a good so, way. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, I really wanted the Atmos. I really wanted them. I and you saw, got them, right? Yeah, I saw photos of them. Last Can you just year. show the camera? Samples. Show everyone. Wild. I saw samples of them last year. I just think they're incredible. They I'm considering like getting like me. another pair because I feel like this is a shoe that I'm gonna want, like a double up. What are they reselling for now then? Well, they're, they're not. not out they don't come out till tomorrow. Or Friday. Yeah. So they would have well, come out. Yeah, would have come out, yeah. Yeah. But what? they're reselling already. I know that. Oh, I haven't even looked. I need to check StockX. Yeah. Meg, what about you? Hmm, I'm looking at you. I'm like, is there anything we've discussed? I can't. Um, you're getting the deluxe. 
Mm. Yeah. But that's like already out. I'm getting yeah. that on sale. It's on sale. What, the deluxe, I'm buying a sale show. The black, standard. The black, the black yeah, one. the navy one with the like neon going through it. Okay. I see this, basically, I see this as a really chic show. It's gone into sale, whatever. On the Nike website, Bargain. yeah. Um, in, everywhere, uh, Yeah, everywhere. <laughs> so everywhere. So <laughs> all in sale. I'm, I'm yeah. getting mine from 18 Montrose. <laughs> shout, shout out 18 shout, Montrose. Shout out to them. Um, shout out to Ha. Yeah, I think it's a really like, chic i know what i'm wearing it with. I'm, yeah i think it's chic i'm wearing it with like yeah. navy like nice. shiny like track pants. Nice yeah. track pants yeah yeah you know what i'm already wearing it with like it's smart it's quite elegant shoe it's got style to it that's what i'm getting next like it yeah, well thanks know. for coming in thank you My very pleasure. very thank much thanks it's fun us. yeah and make sure you guys check out studio elk and the uk6 podcast yeah, yeah, guys before we go make sure that you let us know in the comments in order to win a mug we want to know what is the one piece of Nike clothing, or any clothing in fact, that if you could customize, what would it be? So let us know in the comments for your chance to win some of the Soul Supply mugs. Peace. Boom. Thank you. Cool.